Hello everyone, it's Peggy from Peggy's Tropical Garden. Before we get started, I just wanted to take a couple of minutes out to say thank you so much for all of your support, your kind words, your comments, your entertainment. You all have been wonderful. The plant world has embraced me and um, I appreciate it. And I just wanted to make sure that I took time out to express my appreciation to you. Also, I want to give you a heads up to my subscribers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. To show how much I appreciate you, I will be announcing this spring a whale fin giveaway. Yes, I'm giving away a whale fin. And because you're watching today, I'm even going to give you a further heads up. It's going to involve comments. And the more comments you have, the more chances you have to win. So... Go ahead, get some comments in early if you're not someone who normally comments um, so that you have a chance at that well fin. I will announce the specifics when I'm ready to do the giveaway, which again, like I said, isn't gonna be until spring because I don't wanna mail it and you win and you're somewhere cold and it dies because these are my babies that I'm giving away. So anyway, that's to show my appreciation to my subscribers. Also, there have been some uh, fellow plant tubers that I would like to just call out, give them a shout out for all of their support to me. Um, Carmen Whitehead, uh, she's excellent. She has a nice channel. If you've never checked her out, go ahead and check her out. She has a lot of things for weddings and stuff like that. And then there's Suzette's Garden and Linda Sue Plants for You. If you're ever feeling like you just miss family, if you live away from home or whatever, I mean, their videos make you feel like you're sitting at their kitchen table having a nice family chat with them as they, you know, talk about plants and whatever. So check them out too, very sweet ladies. Um, and they've been very supportive of me and I appreciate it so much. And then there's Simply Alicia A. If you haven't checked her out yet, you owe it to yourself. And then the first time you hear her laugh at anything, you will see her laugh is so infectious. I, she laughs, I start laughing. Maybe that means I'm crazy. <laughs> I don't think that's it. I think she just has a very infectious laugh and a very infectious personality. She's a very, seems to be a very kind soul. I talk like I've known these people forever. They make me feel like that. I've just met them through YouTube. So, but check her out. And then there's a newcomer uh, who's been subscribed to my channel. And I just want to help her out too. And her uh, channel name is Plant... Plantas y Mas, and uh, she's doing some good things over there. She also has, she does her, her videos. She'll have one in English, and then she'll do the same thing in Spanish. She seems to be a very kind and sweet person also, very into plants. Well, we all are love, everyone I'm talking about, you can see right off their love for the plants. It's you, my viewers, my subscribers, who comment and stuff that just make this so fun and so, worthwhile to do so i just want to send you a heartfelt thank you thank you so very much for all of your support here's your video thanks for watching hello and welcome to peggy's tropical garden coming to you from the florida keys with what's in bloom in january with as many sansevieria as i have i have never seen one in bloom and i almost missed this one the day after recording my sansevieria collection video i noticed this stem with all these little tiny buds on it on my snake plant. I've never seen this before. I don't know why I never even thought about do they flower? Well, they do. Um, I don't know if I missed the flowers or if these are the buds, but hey, either way, I'm thrilled. So the first thing in bloom is my Sansevieria. Or should we say the first thing in bud? I don't know, <laughs> but I'm just thrilled to see it. I'm sure my Sansevieria lovers will give me some insight. Next in bloom, out in my bromeliad bed, are these two beautiful tiger stripe bromeliads. Look at those blooms. They look like, ki like candy corn. <laughs> they really do. Look at that bright orange red and that yellow. Absolutely gorgeous. Needless to say, I didn't miss these. And not to be outdone is this little bromeliad over by my waterfall that I have mounted on a piece of wood. This little bromeliad has been in bloom for over a month now, and they both at one time had the little purple flowers, but this is all that's left now. Normally when they're not in bloom, you just have the green foliage. She goes from plain Jane to 
absolutely gorgeous when she's in bloom. And keep in mind, these can be grown indoors with some light and some humidity. They're good to go. Next thing in bloom is this dwarf jasmine plant. This smells amazing. Look at that. There's a pollinator going in there. Perfect timing. Look at that. And these flowers smell so, so good. They're so fragrant. In my climate, these dwarf jasmine bloom for me year round. Also in bloom are these yellow ground orchids. These had never bloomed for me before. I had a problem with it. And then in recent months, they've just started blooming and are staying in bloom. And they're, they're gorgeous little yellow flowers. Continuing on are more ground orchids. And you probably recognize these from one of my plant hauls. These have been in bloom, I would say nonstop for at least the last five or six months. Cutest little flowers, look at that. They, um, and one dies off and here comes another one. Right now I have two bloom spikes and most of the flowers on the higher one are starting to die off. And that's why, there you go, that's the higher one. It's starting to die off, but these have been in bloom for months and months. They just keep giving. Even the Hawaiian Thai plant wants in on the action. Now this is the remnants of what's left from this plant flowering. You can see a, a little bit of flower left at, there, but um, these have pretty much died off, but has definitely been in bloom recently. I'd been planning to do this What's in Bloom video for a while, and I keep waiting for one plant to go in bloom, which means the other plant loses its bloom, and that was the case here. I missed out on this one. And look who's showing up all late for the party now. Yes, my Thanksgiving cactus has decided it's time for her to bloom. Isn't that gorgeous? These are the most unorthodox looking flowers I've ever seen, but I love them. And of course, I'm not the only one. I saw all of your pictures of your Christ, I mean, your Thanksgiving cactus in bloom and all of that, and I had nothing. So here I am in January with my Christmas cactus in bloom, but she sure is beautiful. I forgive her for being late. And the award for tiniest bloom goes to, yes, this little cactus. Look at her. She looks like she's wearing a little crown, her tiara of flowers. Look at these bright pink flowers. And the smaller her offsets are getting some too. You have to excuse all the debris around him. She's in a terrible place. She's under a tree, the tree is dropping stuff, and she still gives me flowers. She deserves to be moved. <laughs> Beautiful. And the biggest production given for wild blooming would have to go to this agave desmediana. This is my second one that is go has gone and thrown a bloom spike. They are mono monocarpal. So once she finishes with all this, yes, my whole plant dies and I'll have a big gap in my garden. But in the meantime, she's throwing this thing out. It's probably about eight to 10 feet in the air now. Each little arm here has little buds all over it and all of those buds will open and have lots of little flowers. I have a video from the last one that bloomed and I'll insert it in a card at the top so you can click on that link if that's something you're interested in seeing. It's definitely something to see. Next up is my poor looking desert rose. They're not doing so good after the makeover but they're giving me a flower here and there. So she wanted to be included in this video, so she made sure she left just one flower for me. Another favorite year-round bloomer is my crown of thorns, and I have several of them in different colors. This is my peach-colored one. It's a pinkish peach, and it is full of flowers right now, and as it usually is in the summer or winter, it doesn't matter. You cannot convince her to stop blooming. Isn't that beautiful? Also in bloom in this cactus and succulent bed is this aloe plant. Look at that. Now this is another one that is a frequent bloomer as you can see by the, the dried up bloom spikes that are there. I need to go ahead and trim those and she is right here by another crown of thorns. This is a different kind of crown of thorns. 
uh, Euphorbia milii. Um, it's more of like a bush form. It grows in a bush. So look at that. And again, year round, full of them. And here is my yellow one. And I'm growing this one in a pot, as you can see. But year round bloomers. Now these are really cute. They're yellow. I don't know if it can show. Yeah, there you go. It's yellow and it has like a little bit of pink around the edges and green in the middle. They're so pretty. Crown of thorns. If you don't have any and you want year round color in your garden or in your home, get the crown of thorns. Of course you need the right conditions for them, but they don't require much. And then right over here, I don't know why I have left this pot here. I was supposed to be moving it and it ended up here. But this is my white desert rose plant. I love her too. And she has started blooming for me. And she's not given out a lot of blooms, but she always has at least two, three blooms on her. And again, here's a yet another crown of thorns. And this one is a fuchsia, a hot pink. And I absolutely love this one too. I think these are just the coolest thing. And yes, they have lots of thorns. And yes, they are sharp. So definitely not something if you have young kids or pets that get into your garden or into your plants. And if we're going to talk about blooms in the garden, we have to talk about this hibiscus plant. This is the one that I recently got on a plant haul that I've been looking for for months. Look at those beautiful blooms. And she's pretty much staying in bloom for me, even though I haven't found out where I'm going to put her permanently. But she's still hanging in there. I did pot her up at least. So isn't that gorgeous? Look at that. Big, beautiful blooms. Very showy. The next plant in bloom is also a hibiscus. It's a snow hibiscus with the variegated foliage. So flower or not, it's still very, very nice to look at, a beautiful plant. And then right over here is more of your standard hibiscus. I call it that because it's the one you see most frequently in stores. And when you think hibiscus, you tend to think this color. But it has some, some buds on it still. But right now, this is the only bloom, and it is beautiful. And the Stinky Flower Award goes to this cactus here. This cactus gets big, beautiful, burgundy blooms that are bell-shaped, and they smell like rotting flesh to attract flies to pollinate it. They smell atrocious. When I first got this, I didn't know what the smell was. I finally figured out what was smelling so bad. I had this by my patio. I had to move this plant to the back of my yard because it just smelled so bad. And the last time I had like five flowers bloom at the same time, my whole yard smelled absolutely disgusting. My husband and I have been going around the yard trying to figure out if some animal or something had died in the yard and then realized once again, it was this stinky plant. But it's very interesting. <laughs> And I guess that's why I still have it. And on that note, that wraps up What's in Bloom for the month of January. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.